Back a few years ago when I first got my uh, DL4, I was really keen to get it half speed and start to work with it and, and uh, use it to create, among other things, uh, get box or beatbox effects on the guitar. And what I noticed is that if I created some parts at half speed and then bumped them up, they'd be pitched higher and twice as fast. And they, they, sounded, they sounded a little bit better in the mix of the rest of the loops I created by doing so. And it created, I was able to create better articulations of my, for instance, my shaker, or I'd call my hi-hat part. Uh, and uh, I just thought that the sound of my beatbox parts got better. So we have the basic shaker part. And that's just muting the strings and rubbing with your fingers or your palm. And different areas have slightly different tonalities. And of course, different pickup changes do too. And then kick drum is usually bass pickup or all four, three pickups, which I have the wiring for on this guitar, with a slap, and a muted slap down here to create a bass drum. And I add a little bit more sauce because my expression pedal brings in a big deep re reverb. So I'll do this kind of thing. Or I'll gate it by bringing the pedal back. Okay, so, so let me get about creating a little groove box like this. And uh, I've put the line six looper into half speed. And I'm gonna record a, a, a little part here as if I were thinking in slow motion of the groove uh, I, I was eventually gonna come up with. If I weren't sitting, I'd probably bust some real snake charmer moves while I do this, because it's, you know, it's pretty cool. Okay, here we go. So that's two measures at half speed. I'm gonna add myself a little woodbox part. Again, a mute. And then I'll bump it up to speed. and add my kick and snare. And there I have my groove. And now I can add a little progression on top of it or just a little riff and build up from there. So that's just a little hint at how you can use half speed. There's a lot of cool things you can do in addition to that. Uh, if I had a groove like that going, I might want to do something like, uh, oh, add a fake mandolin part, but I want to start back in half speed again. Take that out. Combine that with reverse and create kind of fake minor violin kind of sounds.
endless hours of fun. <laughs> Another way I like to use reverse is if I'm in a live band setting and I'm not really trying to create a groove of any kind, but I might be wanting to play thematically and then play against myself. Nothing better than taking a, a riff and playing it backwards. Um, so something like this. Um, so forth. Uh, rhythmic grooves sound pretty darn cool too, played backwards. Okay, here I'm going to try to do kind of a fake tabla by using reverse to kind of create some of the envelopes that you hear from the pitch bending in a tabla's head. Uh, and we'll do it at half speed too and then try it at different speeds and see how it sounds. Uh, okay, so first this is kind of a medium groove. And So reverb is a very cool thing to explore, and I might add that the, even though this is a uh, an effects board designed for guitar, there's no reason because it's got such great headroom that one couldn't use this on vocals or any other kind of instrument, keyboards or what have you. Okay, so I wanted to move on to uh, using short loops to create glitch textures. Now you've probably seen a lot of loopers come on the market lately that are all about mangling, and What's so cool about this looper is that even though it's not designed specifically for that, you can do that with short loops and create some real interesting textures. And the other thing is, is you've also got this extraordinary effects engine around it to also treat it. Um, so I've created a couple of special uh, presets. Let's see, let me find it. Uh, here we go, here's Loop Glitchy. Now in this one, I've kind of set it up to create short loops, uh, mostly, I mean, it can create anything, but uh, I got it set so that I can just kind of get on short loops very quickly and then mangle it with different things. And one of the things I mangle it with is putting delay after the looper, because that's a very cool aspect of how flexible the layout, uh, the signal path layout is in the Helix effects, is that I can really place that looper anywhere in the chain. So in this case, I have it the very last except for a dual delay. So I'm going to be treating it with a dual delay. Let's listen to that dual of delay for a second, hear what that sounds like. Okay, so let's just do something really quick. And I'm going to really be rocking my red pedal here to for the overdub volume because sometimes I don't want the loop to overload if I, I put too much stuff on a short loop. Sometimes I do. So here's a very short loop.
Here's both a delay and a wah-wah after the loop. 